uh, Trump. It's crazy. This is why I I refuse to watch that joke they had on there. They're trying to get that that old Supreme Justice confirmed. This yeah. Situation. They're gonna do that too. That's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just pray God that everybody in this United States of America. Get out. But uh, hopefully everybody's doing well. Hopefully you shared in the worship on yesterday. Great sermon. And even if you were able to, to drop in for the for the funeral festivities today, that was that was that was powerful as well. So God is still good and He's still on the throne. So Brother Isaacs, will you go ahead and take take the lead, sir? How you want to do that? Yes, sir. Uh, Brother Luke, are you there? I am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm going to read the scripture. Do you mind bringing, leading the prayer, sir? No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, evening, brothers. Good evening. Uh, for your hearing, uh, hear ye these words. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into the vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them to the vineyard. And he went out about a third hour and saw the others standing in idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also to the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. And he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They said unto him, Because no man hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right ye shall receive. For your hearing, I've read the first seven verses of Matthew chapter 20. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his mighty word. May we all bow our heads. Father God, as once more again we come thanking you for what you've done, thanking you for seeing another day. We thank you for just being who you are. Thank you for Jesus who died for us. We ask that you'd watch over us, Father, as we enter into this lesson, Father, and ask that you'd allow for us to learn and apply it to our lives. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for the food that you put on our table, the clothes that you yes. put on our back, Father. Thank you just for being there each time that we've called, Father. We ask that you'd watch over the pastor, Father, Pastor Anderson, as he brings your word uh, week in and week out. Mm -hmm. Ask that you please continue to watch over Pastor Washington mm -hmm. as he leads us in these studies, Father. Please bless those who are bringing the lesson. We thank you for the children uh, of the families that are represented here. Mm -hmm. Remember those brothers who are going to be on the line. Remember those who desired to be on the line but could not. We just thank you because you've been so good. Now, Father, those that are sick, Father, with COVID-19 and other different things, Father, we know that you're still in charge, Father. Some of them have gone on home, but, Father, you said to be uh, absent upon the body is, is to be yeah, present with the Lord. Yeah, yeah, and we yeah, thank yeah. you for what you've done, Father. Thank you for being a company keeper. Thank you for being a doctor, Father. I ask that you be with my dad in his time of distress, Father. Watch over him, Father, for you know him and you know all about him. We just thank you for all those who are, are represented here tonight. We thank you for the families, Father. We thank you for everything that you've done. And, Father, when everything comes to an end, we ask to have some place in your kingdom. These and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. uh, Brother Lucas, thank you for a strong prayer. And Brother Isaacs, always thank you for getting us started with our devotion. Tonight, we push forward in chapter five. Now, Brother Scott has been pounding us, but I thought I'm, I don't have any better sense of thinking it's been good stuff. So he's up again tonight. And so we want to let Brother Scott, uh, whatever you got on, uh, we, we, we got our seatbelts on and our cushions. So come on with it. And on next week, uh, we will go forward in our studies to chapter six, uh, week six in your book. Uh, chapter six is no more sifting through the rubble. No, through, no more sifting through the rubble. And we'll make preparations to see our audio, our video next week. So at this time, Brother Stephen Scott, uh, our friend and our brother, Brother Scott, you got the floor, sir. All right, thank you, Pastor. So uh, it, it may not be as long of a night tonight, so, uh, I'm hoping uh, within the next 30, 40 minutes here, uh, brothers, as a young starving college student uh, working full time and going to school full time, unfortunately, I didn't have the, the resources that most of our kids have today to help them navigate through their financial challenges. Brother Robinson, I just didn't have those, those resources. I didn't know much about grants and student loans and scholarship programs and and all those things that were available. 
in fact, I can remember being in one financial bind, uh, needing to get uh, my car repaired and pay for tuition and, and pay for books for the semester. And I can remember uh, calling my credit card company uh, because back then you couldn't just go online and, and handle your business and, and apply for this or that. You actually physically have to have to pick up the phone and make a call. Uh, so I called the, the credit card company asking for more credit and more time to pay. And I can remember the credit card company telling me, Mr. Scott, we can't help you. You're out of time and we can't extend you no more credit. Brothers, I want you to know on this section, I'm out of time and Pastor Washington is not extending me any more credit, <laughs> any more grace. So this is absolutely the last section or uh, session we're going to have on study six uh, in our book. Again, Pastor Washington, uh, to my co-laborers in this, this study, Brother Ware and Brother Irvin Johnson, uh, and to all you brothers, good evening. Now, last week we left, uh, 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 Monday, we left off concluding our study on walking securely with our discussion of David and Bathsheba. Uh, underscoring the, the second of two areas we wanted to pay close attention to. Uh, if we're going to walk securely as men of integrity, uh, and we looked at finances and we, uh, we concluded our discussion last week on relationships. And tonight, in getting to our conclusion, we want to take a look at the second Bible study of this, this segment on No More Compromising Our Integrity on page, Your Integrity on page 86, titled Staying Strong in Difficulty. Now, brothers, I just believe that the flow of the lesson is very important in participatory uh, teaching. I have, however, in my, in my preparation, there is one question in this book that has just been on my mind for the past six weeks that I just haven't been able to properly fit into the flow of the lesson outline. So I, what I wanna do tonight is I wanna get started by asking this question. Now, let me say this also. I am so concerned by the way we will easily dismiss and answer the question in the standard Christian way, Brother Dokes, that I want to rephrase it to make it a little less pointing at ourselves. I'm going to rephrase the question. It's actually in your books, but I'm going to rephrase the question. Here's the question. And here's what I want us to ponder just, to, just as an appetizer to get this lesson started. Do we, and this question has really been, this question has been on my mind for the past six weeks. Uh, when I read it, it just, it has just been sticking with me. Do we as people, not you individually, Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna point to you, okay? But do we as people pay as much attention to our integrity as we do to our success? That question bothered me. It, 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 it bothered me and it's been bothering me for a couple of weeks. Do we as people, now I'm not talking about you individually. I'm, don't, 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 you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta search your soul and, and give me a Christian answer I, I, because I, I'm not going to even point to you, but I, I just, I just want to ask the question. Do we as people, not you individually, pay as much attention to our integrity as we do to our, our success? That's part one of the question. I think as individuals, we have a tendency to focus on successes. We strive for success so that we can secure our future and make uh, things comfortable for our families. Uh, we often, I don't, I don't know if often is a better word, but sometimes we don't focus on our integrity until it's been compromised. Mm. Okay, okay. Is it, is it the, the mindset set of by any means necessary? Is that, Some, is that, sometimes is that what it, it depends. Is? Sometimes it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Uh, when you look at today's society, it is a uh, doggy dog world kind of, you know, what's best for me? That's what I'm looking out for, what I can get out of it. Mm. And I, I like to follow up what Brother Williams said. I, I have to agree with him because success is the only thing that matters. Integrity doesn't seem to matter. So why, in a sense, because I saw the question as well, and I put nothing on my line either. 
because mm -hmm. I think in our society today, integrity don't matter. Success is the only thing that makes a statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think Dick yeah. and Scott, uh, I tend, I agree. Uh, I would use the example uh, of being an accountant. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times of being an accountant, you, there's some time where your, your integrity may be compromised in trying to play around with those numbers in order to get the end goal. You know, uh, I think some people in the C-suite, you know, you've stepped on some people, you've taken over some people, you walked over some people, you threw some people under the bus all to get where? a higher salary in your name on the 10 K at the end of the year. So, uh, in, yeah, success, uh, integrity is not a huge thing when it comes to the corporate world. It's just about, Hey, what am I going to do to take care of me, my family and what I have accomplished so I can, you know, somebody else can pat me on the back. Thank you, brother Williams. All before, right. before, before, the, before the majority of you guys got on, we were talking about our politics. Let's look in, in our political world today. Uh, do any one of those senators or representatives have any integrity? They are more about what they can get than this into life today. Look at how bad the United States is doing right about now. Because the people who have insurance have no integrity. They don't even seem to care about integrity. Good point, Brother Dell. Brother Teacher. Mm -hmm. I, was say, I was gonna say, uh, I've, I've noticed the different demographics, depending on where you live. If you're in a, uh, when I live, up north, not making it personal, just, just speaking from my experience. Mm -hmm. When you live up north, there are more industrial jobs. So there aren't as many high paying jobs. So you kind of settle into it's not really uh, integrity, as, as brothers have already said, integrity is not that important. But down here in the south, I've noticed that they go, they kind of go hand in hand. Like you, mm -hmm. you can't, there's certain successes you can't really achieve and keep without integrity. Uh, I think it would be a better way. I've I've noticed our brothers, us black men, not a Christian answer. We do well down here in the South in terms of living. We do much better than how I see us live up North. I don't see as many brothers with properties and that kind of thing, but the integrity, like I said, is a direct correlation because usually the brothers who do well in the South, I'm noticing they do have a sense of integrity versus up North. Again, it's more of industrial and not as many opportunities. So, so, so it's not that big of a focus. Wow. Okay. Okay. All well, right. well, I, well, I would like to just say, uh, Othello, you and I will have a separate sidebar about that because I'm from up north and I would beg to, I have a, just a different opinion about that. But to go back to the question, I agree that that uh, we have, uh, we put integrity at the bottom of our list when it comes to achieving our goals. Uh, it seems like that uh, success matters more than integrity. Okay. All right. Thank you. But well, that's that's that, that's the easy part of the question. That's the easy part. And again, um, it, it 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 wasn't poignant. I wasn't pointing to 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 any individual because you know. Uh, um, but the the overall consensus is uh, we don't pay attention to our integrity as much as we do to our success. Uh, I think that's the overall consensus. Um, the the tough question is how do we change this? That that's that that that's the second half of the question. How, how do we how do we change how do we change this mindset? Wow. Well, until you get until until integrity gets rewarded, it has no value. Mm. That that was that's what I would say. If there's a way to start with, like like. Well, developing kids and you like in, in scouting there's a marriage system you get a merit badge you become a next level because you get enough merit badge you can go to the next level so there's a reward incentive into getting these merit badges in integrity though it's rarely the issue until like brother williams said until it's too late but but it's rarely a way variable back I'll, I'll stop there Mm, that's 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 good, Pastor. That's good. Anybody else? I think the first thing is you've got to want to change it. You've got to have a reason to change it. Mm. And if there's nothing driving you to change it, no matter what, you're not going to change it. There's, there's, you've got in order to be successful at anything, you've got to want to do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to be successful as at having integrity, you've got to want to make that difference. You got to want to make that change in your life. Mm. 
So when you when you yeah. when you when you want to do it, you'll find a way to do it. You'll start looking at your surroundings. You start looking at the things that you've done and you're doing currently, and you'll make those subtle changes to get better. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, and I didn't have this question, but you 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 brought it to my attention. So what what role do we play? What what role do we play in in driving the, a, a change in mindset? You know, because you said you 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 have to want to change. So so in saying that, the 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 onus, the responsibility is on the individual. But 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 for for the for the um, uh, for the thirty brothers right now on on this call, what what role do we play in driving this change in mindset? Well, and then we gotta we're, gonna be, we're gonna move we, on. We've got gotta to be willing to address it. You've got to be willing to hold people accountable without the fear of uh, repercussions or losing a friendship or, or falling out. You've got to be willing to do that. In love, of course, you've got to learn to do it in love. But we've got to be, and this, it goes with anything in my mind, uh, we have to learn to hold ourselves accountable just as we need to hold our brothers accountable. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, it's about what the benefit is to all of us, particularly that brother and his family and whatever else he's doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. All right, well, thank you, Brother Roberts. So we're gonna move on, we're gonna, we're gonna move on. We got, we got a lot of ground we're gonna, we're gonna try to cover. Uh, but like I said, that was a difficult question for me and I, I wanted uh, to get uh, some responses and, and some some discussion on that question. So I I didn't have a better place to put it than at the front. So let's let's get right into it. So um, if you can recall what we talked about uh, on last week, uh, let me start right here. Maybe you are not like David and most of us. Okay, uh, maybe you are not vulnerable uh, like David was vulnerable, uh, and oftentimes we're vulnerable when things are going well. When 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 I mean, hey, I I. You know, I, I, I got peace on every side uh, maybe, and it's just, it just every day just seems sun, uh, uh, sunny and rosy. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're not like that uh, and you, you don't, you're not vulnerable um, um, when, when things are going well. Um, maybe you are, are worse when things are actually going bad Yeah. in times of difficulty. And that's where we find ourselves on page 86 of our book, Staying Strong uh, in Difficulty. So what I like is I like for somebody to read the first two paragraphs on the top of page 86. The first two paragraphs on the top of page 86. Mm -hmm. A man's integrity and disability tested in adversity. Mm -hmm. You know that as well as I do, if you hit your thumb with a hammer, that occasion lends itself to doing or saying something you shouldn't for, shouldn't for more than if you were sitting in your easy chair drinking sweet tea. Difficulty diminishes our resolve and kickstart our human nature to seek a way to cope. If you want to know the level of your integrity, measure it at a time when circumstances aren't going well. What you really like can be measured only when your life is falling apart. All right. Thank you, Brother Williams. So Dr. King said, Dr. Martin Luther King said this, we must accept finite disappointment, but we must never lose infinite hope. That's what Dr. King said. Now, too often we view our problems as stop signs when they should be merely guidelines. Too often what we do is we view our problems as stop signs when they should be merely guidelines. Coming up to my, 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 my next question right here in the book, Looking at the choices on page 86, mm -hmm. what are you like when times are most difficult and why? Um, let's take a couple of answers there. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to look at this and you've had a chance to ponder it, okay? Um, looking at the choices on page 86, patient, irritable, gracious, judgmental, trusting, fearful, affirming, destructive. What are you like when times are most difficult and why? Well, I'll go first, bro. Scott. I'm sorry. These brothers just don't feel like talking. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we, we ain't rolled up on their street just yeah, yet. <laughs> well, I, I think for me, it's easy to become a judge because, again, he, he, he had some good stuff in there. I think when, when I'm under thing, I become judgmental. 
if you remember, whether it's the umpire in baseball or, or the referee in basketball, football, they're not playing the game. They get to assess everything. And, mm. and so for me, when I'm under pressure, I get out of the game and become the referee or the judge or start wow. praising how things are. That mm -hmm. way it ain't necessarily about me. It's about how I see every, everything else. And that's one of the ways I struggle a lot of times under, under tough times. All right. That, that, that's good. Kind of like, kind of like our president. We, 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 you know, we judge the, the, the election. We, we already say it's going to be a, a hoax and going to be fraudulent because, you know, we, we know we about to enter some difficult times. Amen. All right. Okay. All right. Somebody else. I think it, at times I'm uh, probably some of all of them, except for destructive. Mm -hmm. I, I, when times get rough, I may be patient. Uh, I know I'm irritable sometimes and judgmental. So, some of it could touch me. Some of all of it could touch me, to be honest with okay. you. All right. Okay. All right. Teach it. Oh, uh, brother Isaac. You use the word, uh, don't be, uh, don't give the Christian answer. So I won't today. We all men on this land. So I will go ahead and touch the one most of them won't touch. And I would say is uh, fearful. I, uh, yeah. About 11 years ago, I lost my job. And uh, Reverend Washington will tell you. I was not the most confident person in the world in my uh, economic abilities. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure what the economy was going to do. You know, the presidents had just changed. And uh, I ain't going to lie, brothers. I just panicked. Mm -hmm. I asked Reverend Washington, could I wash his car or anything? But uh, I was fearful, I'll be honest. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, Brother Scott, uh, Brother Sonia here. I'm, I think I'm both of them. Well, irritable and fearful. Okay. Uh, uh, irritable because of uh, what... Because it's tough times for one thing, <laughs> and uh, fearful because of what's going to happen uh, because of those tough times. Mm -hmm. So those two uh, stand out uh, to me. Okay, great. All right, brother Sanjay, thank you. All right, okay, brother Abner, I haven't heard from you. I'm just going to call you out because I haven't heard from you. you. You've been there. You've been there all this time, all these weeks. <laughs> Go ahead, brother Abner. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. I'm, I'm sort of like Brother Robinson in a way. I think I run the scale from starting from when it first happens until it, until it uh, gets longer. I think initially, I'm probably fairly patient in the first week of, a, uh, of my trouble. <laughs> All right. And by the second week, I kind of moved to the level of being kind of irritable. Okay. Uh, uh, then uh, 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 by the fourth or fifth week, I kind of get to them, I, I, I'm a little fearful. All right. And if uh, if it lasts a little too long, I might even get a little destructive in my wow. uh, okay. to my own sense of, right. of operating out of me. So okay. I'm kind of like Brother Robinson. I think I move through stages of all of that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I probably should have said on day one, I might be trusting. But mm -hmm. then then the, then the sunrise the next morning, I'm way past on to some other stuff. So, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, so uh, I'm on a sliding scale, depending on what stage you catch me in. All Thank right. you. All right. Thank you, Brother Abner. That, that, that's good. Thank you, Brother Abner. You, you, co you covered the gamut for sure. <laughs> All right. Anybody else before we move on? Uh, Brother Scott. Brother Scott. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Kevin. Yeah, give me that question again, bro, Scott. I've been sitting here uh, debating on that for a okay. while. Well, I, we, were, we were looking at the, the choices on page 86. Right. We were trying to dis identify the ones that best describe us when, when times are most difficult. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I, I, well, I would say uh, mine would be like the rest. I mean, I'd be more fearful. Mm -hmm. you know, but, but another thing, too, when I'm fearful, this this drives me to my knees. Okay. Yeah, I start praying more. Okay. And I begin to get my strength when I'm praying. Okay, so you're going from fearful to trusting. Okay, all yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. right. Okay, all right. All right. All right, great. Uh, all right. This is Brother Washington. I'm getting to join the brothers for the first time. Yeah, right. okay. I'm for the math. I okay. had mouth work. I had mouth work done. But uh, okay. for me, for me uh, I'm patient. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of things, but I'm patient because I analyze everything. Wow. And if okay. I make sense of it, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm fearful when I recognize that it was my doing, and I'm only hoping for the mercy because I know that whatever comes my way, I deserve it. I become mm -hmm. very fearful about that, hoping it doesn't come my way. 
Mm -hmm. I, I can be judgmental. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of things, but as uh, Deacon Robinson said, I'm not destructive. I try not to be yeah. destructive. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Brother Washington. Okay. All right. So, brothers. So, um, um, I, I want to give us a, a a real life example. Before I get there, I, I want to say this from from the scripture. In, in, in John sixteen and thirty three, it says, "Christ said, These things have I spoken unto you, that uh, in me ye may have peace. In the world ye will have tribulation. Mm -hmm. but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So God has not guaranteed us." that life is going to be easy. That's one thing. He, he has guaranteed us something. We're going to talk about that a little later. But he has not guaranteed us that life is going to be uh, uh, easy. Indulge me for a second. Stay with me. I, I want to hold your attention um, as, I, as I go through this. So, so indulge me, if you will. Give me, give me your attention. Before the monuments and the federal holiday, historians Remember a time when Martin Luther King's junior popularity was uh, plummeting. Mm -hmm. In the years leading up to his assassination, the preacher and civil rights activist was less popular than ever before. That's In a right. 1966 Gallup poll, uh, that poll found that almost two thirds of Americans had an unfavorable opinion of Dr. King and a third had a positive opinion, a 26 point unfavorable uh, rate increase from just 1963. He was not searching for popularity, however. Uh, uh, that was reported by Claiborne Carlson, director of the Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. Institute at Stanford, uh, something he told Newsweek at the time. What he was trying to put forward was what he thought was the right course of action. I'm going somewhere with this. Mm -hmm. King's popularity began to wane after he received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Carson said that King began to lose his momentum as he moved his attention from civil rights in the South to the North. Brother Othello, he started to move his attention to Chicago to tackle segregation and poverty among Black Americans in that, in that region of the, of the country. And you may know this, uh, uh, Brother Isaac. Dr. King said this himself. It's one thing to talk about desegregation of the University of Alabama, OK? It's quite another thing to talk about the desegregation of neighborhoods in Chicago. He mind. said, the protest and the venom the directed against him in Chicago was unlike anything he had experienced in the South, ever experienced in the South. Now, during the Marquette Park, Park March, King was met by white counter protesters. This is in Chicago, who threw rocks, bottles, and firecrackers. One pro protester held up a sign that said, King would look good with a knife in his back. King was hit with a rock in the head while marching, uh, which knocked him, literally knocked him to the ground. I've seen many de demonstrations in the South, but I have never seen anything so hostile and so hateful as we've seen here today in Chicago. Then, uh, almost there, King then went on to take on a stand, uh, take a, a stand against the Vietnam War that we that we we've all read about in 1960, uh, 1967. Another very unpopular move by him, speaking to three thousand people, he he uttered these words. King said that the U.S. had no honorable intentions in Vietnam and that the government had been wrong about going to war from the beginning. King argued that the U.S. was testing weapons on the Vietnamese people, similar to how the Germans uh, performed tests on Holocaust victims. It, it hurt him politically and it hurt his standing in the Black community. Yes, many Black leaders criticized Martin Luther King. It was hard for him to find a church to to actually go preach in in, the, uh, in some in some cities because he was he was so criticized by his own community. I'm going somewhere with this. 
King's final unpopular move before, the, before his assassination, Carson said, was the Poor People's Campaign of 1968, where King called for a march on Washington to highlight the plight of Americans living in poverty. Yes, he said, we're going to bring the tired, the poor, the the huddled masses, he said in his last Sunday sermon, we're going to demand the government address itself to the problem of poverty. Get this, get this. Here's, here's where I'm going. Here's my point. Here's my point. Meanwhile, the strain and changing dynamics of the civil rights movement had taken a toll on King, especially, especially, I want you to imagine this, especially in his final months of life. He said, I'm frankly tired of March. That's what he said. I I'm tired of marching. I'm tired of going to jail. Uh, he admitted all of this in 1968, living day, every day, under the threat of death. He said, this is what he said. I, I feel discouraged every now and then, and, my and I feel like my work is in vain. But he also says, but then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. And that's where, that's, that's, that's where I want to take us to. Now, Dr. Evans said this, difficulties diminish our resolve and kickstart our human nature to seek a way to cope. It, it, it diminishes our resolve and it kickstarts our human nature to find a way to cope with the situation. And Dr. King admitted he was tired, admitted that he was tired of marching, tired of going to jail, that, that he felt that oftentimes this work was in vain. But he also said, then the Holy Spirit mm. revised my soul again. As kingdom men, if we're going to be men of integrity, we need to be defined by something other than our circumstances, because our circumstances are not going to always be good. Sometimes they're just going to be difficult, okay? Our circumstances oftentimes are going to be problematic. They're not always going to be good, and if we allow them to define us, then we will look and act like our circumstances, which will not be good which will not be good. Here's where I'm going. In fact, in his biography about uh, Lerone Bennett, first published in, 2000, in the year 2000, titled, What Manner of Man, Man, We Are Given an Insight into the Physical and Mental and Spiritual Growth of Dr. King. Now, 12 years later, in his book, Across That Bridge, we see the similarities and another great leader by the name of John Lewis. Mm -hmm. My question, my question is right here. What was it about men like Dr. Martin Luther King and the late John Lewis that allowed them to look past their circumstances and live a life of integrity? What was it about them that allowed them to come through what they had to come through but to look past those circumstances and still live a life of integrity. Let's, let's, let's look at that for just a second. Brother Teacher, mm -hmm. uh, mostly I see just trust in God. I mean, just the, uh, the testimonies I heard at the John Lewis uh, funeral and uh, to consider the, uh, the last speech Dr. King made being 39 years old and, and to have the, the narrative or determination to say, I'm not worried about that now. I'm not worried about that now. That's something an older man would say. Mm. So I just see all, all the way trust in God. And even John Lewis, the picture that, how can you not see that trench coat and that backpack mm. and, and the dogs and the, the age he was? So I just, I just see trust. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. That's, a, that's an easy question. And he's easy answer. Okay, and all right. What drove them guys to do what they did? They knew what their purpose was. Mm, wow. You, you asked a question at the beginning of the class. Why do 
do we as people pay attention to our integrity as much as our success? Mm -hmm. And my question was, what is success? Wow. And success is doing what you was created to do. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King was put on this earth to do what he did, to mm -hmm. seek justice and equality for all people. That mm -hmm. was his mission. And it was mm -hmm. the mission of John Lewis. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you, when you know what your purpose is, and you know uh, what you put, put on this earth to do, then that's success. When you know it and you're doing it, that is success. Mm -hmm. and, and for him to do what he had to do, he had to have integrity. So mm -hmm. I think that knowing what your purpose is would drive mm -hmm. you to do whatever. You don't care. Uh, you, don't, you don't care about your circumstances. Your circumstances will not define you. And I'm mm -hmm. gonna tell you somebody else who did it as well. Mm -hmm. Think about Jesus Christ. Wow. Jesus Love Christ it. said, All take right. this cup away from me. That's what mm -hmm. he said. He mm -hmm. said, take this cup away from me. And mm -hmm. then the Holy Spirit kicked in and said, nevertheless, nevertheless. not my will, but your will be done. Yeah. Yeah. When you know what your purpose is and you know what you've been called to do, mm -hmm. you're not going to let circumstances define you or your character, man. Wow. You're going to be, you're going to have tunnel vision. I wow. got to get it done. Wow. Thank you, Brother Webb. Now y'all see why I'm trying to take my exit so I can get back to these good brothers because we, <laughs> we, we got two horses that are ready to go. Yes, sir. Thank you, Brother Webb. Thank you. Any, anybody else? Anybody else? Brother Scott. All right. Brother Simmons. And, and in, in those days that they had to have integrity and they had to be strong and they had to depend on the Lord because they had nobody else to depend on. Mm -hmm. And to be a leader in those times, you already knew what you was going to go through, but you had to be strong because you couldn't get the people to follow you. Mm -hmm. You know, they were doing it for the people, but you got to have a, be a strong person to take the lead. Mm -hmm. Especially in the days what they was going through. Mm -hmm. You know, you, anybody couldn't just do that. Like Brother Way, I say, they knew their purpose. Wow. And mm -hmm. anybody just couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So they knew their purpose and they knew what was going to happen, but they had to lead in order to get their people where they need to take them to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you look at uh, Reverend King and, and uh, Congressman Lewis mm -hmm. and their demeanor, uh, even though they knew their purpose, knowing your purpose is one thing and that's good. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have something to take you even knowing your purpose. They had to have patience and what God had called them to do. Look here, now you get, to... you get to some, you get, you get where we're going next. We, we, we actually get right there. Uh, yeah, you, you go on there, but go ahead. I'm, you go, no, no, you no, no, go, go ahead, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening, go ahead. I'm with you, go ahead. I'm, I'm let you take it, go ahead. <laughs> all right, so, all right, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody other than Willis Robinson? <laughs> okay. All right. So, all right. So simply put, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, uh, Brother Ware, you, you expressed it really well. They were, fine by, they were defined by something other than their circumstance. They were defined by their purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they were equipped. They were equipped with, with, with some supernatural powers. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that. They, they were equipped, just like we are. They were equipped with some mm -hmm. su supernatural powers. Mm -hmm. So as kingdom men, we must be defined by the fruit of the spirit. That's where that's where Rob Robinson is taking us. We must be defined by the fruit of the spirit, even when, even when life is tough. So I want somebody to read uh, for us uh, the top portion of page eighty seven, all the way through the scriptures that are there, all the way through where it says Galatians five twenty two and twenty six. Somebody read that for us. The top portion of eighty 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 seven. Yeah. The it says the spirit reveals the true level of your integrity, especially in the midst of life's toughest losses. Mm -hmm. Free father. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Mm -hmm. Now, no, I'm sorry, now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions <clears throat> and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. All right. Thank you, Pastor. So, brother, I, brothers, I can't think of uh, no better way to end the discussion 
that we've had over the past five weeks plus have been with the fruit of the spirit, okay? Because if you want integrity, then you just can't, you just uh, uh, have to rely on what God has already equipped you with. Because God will never call you without equipping you. Amen. He'll, he'll never call you to do something without equipping you with the ability to do it. The Holy Spirit doesn't just dwell in me. It, equi it equips me with what I need to, uh, to, to live a life of integrity, of godly integrity in the midst of the most difficult circumstances. If Christ has taken residence in your life, mm -hmm. then simply put, you are without excuse. And that's the problem that we, we, we always want to make excuses. But the fact of the matter is, brothers, everybody on this call, we are without excuse. Men of God, do you realize what we have to work with? Do, do, you, do you actually realize what God has equipped you with to work with? The, the Holy Spirit has planted some fruit in our life for any and every situation in life that we can encounter. So again, I can't think of any better way to end this discussion on not on, on no more compromising our integrity than the than the park right here and discuss the fruit of the spirit. So what I want you to do, if you have your Bible, I, I got I got several different scriptures, and we we just gonna go right through them. We're gonna go right through them, and we're gonna look we're gonna look at every single uh, uh every single item that that's identified here that make up the fruit of the spirit that make up the fruit of the spirit. Love somebody find for me John. 15 and 12 and read that. John 15 and 12 and read that. I have it, Brother Scott. Go right ahead. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast now. Uh, is that right? Now Gospel of John 15 and 12. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. Somebody else. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, uh, my command is this. Love each other. The first fruit of the Spirit, love. Love each other as I have loved you. God will never command you, again, will co never command you to do something without equipping you with the ability to do it. Brothers, I know it's unnatural. We talked about this in our, lesson, our Sunday school lesson. I know yes. it's unnatural. And it goes against everything we know carnally to love and do good towards someone who has hurt you. It, go, it went against everything that Dr. King and John Lewis knew to, 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 to naturally love somebody, love the people who were spitting out venom against them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But God has given us some unnatural ability. He really has. It's an amazing thought that no matter how badly I feel uh, someone has wronged me or how much I dislike a person, I still have the power to love them. Wow. I still have the power to love them because God has, God, if I've received Jesus Christ as my Savior, God has planted that fruit in me, the ability to love like he's exemplified love in my life, okay? The next one is joy. Joy. Somebody read for me Psalm 16 and 11. Joy. And if, if, if you want to comment, just stop me. Just stop me. But I'm going to keep moving, okay? Because I don't have a question yet, but I, I do appreciate your comment. So joy, Psalm 16 and 11. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are, pleasure, are pleasures forevermore. All right. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with your joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. In the words of Kirk, uh, Kirk Franklin, this has nothing to do with happiness because in order to be happy, you have to have something happening. Mm -hmm. God gives us 
a spirit of joy from knowing we have an advocate even during the worst of times. So because of that spirit of joy, I don't have to go through the motions when times get difficult. I, I, don't, have to, I don't have to compromise my integrity and, 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 and get fearful and judgmental and irritable and destructive because he's, he's planted that, that, that spirit of joy uh, in me. The next one is peace. Somebody read for me, John, other than Pastor Washington, somebody read for me, John 16 and 33. I know you got your Bibles. I know I got some Bible thumb, but you already know the scripture. It's, it's in your memory. You ain't got to look at the, the uh, you ain't got to flip the page. Brother Teacher. All right. Brother Teacher. John 16 and 33, uh, Brother uh, Isaac. I wasn't going to read. I was just going to say something about the previous one. about. Okay, like you this. go ahead. Then you can read. You, you say what you got to say. Then you read. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, maybe an evangelistic uh, moment for all of us in terms of all people right. we know. This is in that presence. Maybe so many people have turmoil because they're not in this present. Maybe they don't have joy because they're not around him. You know? mm -hmm. it's, just not, it's not just seeing us go to church and be nice to our wives and our kids don't look you know, bad. They're not in the present, so that's why they don't have joy. So. Mm. And this is the fullness of joy. But what was the scripture you asked me to read? I apologize. John 60. Thank you, brother. Uh, 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 Isaac, uh, for those comments. John 16 and 33. Read that 16. for me. I have it. 1633. Thank you. These right. things, these things I have spoken unto you, that in my in in me might you, you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Okay, so he tells us, um, uh, so that in him we may have peace, despite of the the trouble that we're gonna uh, we're gonna have to endure in this world. Now. We won't buy too much of anything without uh, nowadays without a guarantee. We want a guarantee of everything we buy. Okay, uh, we want to know for sure that what we are getting and and, and know that uh, uh, what we're buying is not going to cause us any trouble whatsoever. Now, like I said, God has not guaranteed us anything. He has not guaranteed us that we're going to have. A, 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 an easy life, free of trouble. But he has guaranteed us one thing. The only guarantee that God has given us is that we will have trouble. Yeah, right. That I mean, that that that's it. He he said that. Uh, he says it right here, uh, right here in Scripture, that we he guarantees that in this life we're going to have trouble. But the truth of the matter is, all trouble is is disrupted peace. Yeah. So even in your trouble, you still have peace. You mm -hmm. just have to activate it. That's yeah. all you have to do. Because again, all your trouble is, is disrupted peace. Disrupted. Mm -hmm. Don't allow the circumstances of this world to disrupt the peace that God has given you. Again, we're talking about integrity and not compromising our integrity. And if we're not going to compromise our integrity, then we have to realize the supernatural power that he has given us through the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, patience, patience. Psalms 37 and 7. Who has that one for us? Brother Kimball, look like you're getting that one. <laughs> Brother, okay. 30, uh, 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 Psalms, Psalms 37 th and 7. 30, 37, 37 and 7. Be still for the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. All right, okay. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways. The wicked yeah. will have success mm. when they carry out their wicked scheme. I think this is the one of the most difficult things for us to do. Patience even more so than loving those who spitefully use us. On average, brothers, we will wait 20 seconds on an elevator. That's all. If that elevator don't come in 27, 20 seconds, we are going to get irritable. We're going to start looking for stairs if we're in shape and we can take some stairs. <laughs> but we, after 20 seconds, we, we, have, we don't want to wait for the elevator. <laughs> uh, we don't want to wait for anything. That's right. This is why God has to teach us 
patience. He has to teach us how to be patient. If you have children, you, 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 if you've raised children, God has taught you some patience. He's, he, he, has gotten, he, he has gotten you to the point where you, you appreciate having a certain level of patience. Kindness, kindness. Ephesians 4 and 32. Ephesians 4 and 32. And I have it. And be and be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. All right. Okay. Once you become aware of the the compassion and kindness of Christ uh, and what He has demonstrated to, towards us, we should desire to demonstrate the same towards uh, towards others. In scripture, we see that the woman with the alabaster jaw who, who, who used it on Jesus. And mm -hmm. Jesus', Jesus uh, a comment uh, in that experience is that uh, she has received forgiveness. So she's expressing her love because she knows what it's like to receive forgiveness. And because we receive the love of Christ, uh, we know we should be kind and compassionate towards others because he's extended that same kindness and compassion towards uh, towards us. So if you receive much, you ought to give much. To, to whom much has been given, much will be required. Goodness, goodness. Galatians six and ten. Somebody read that for us real quick. And brother Scott, what is the next scripture that you have for us so we can already be there? Yeah, that's good. All right. Okay. All right. I don't know if I want to give it to y'all, but I'm going to go. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go here. Okay. Write them down, Brother Ware. Write them down. Galatians 6 and 10. Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Philippians 4 and 5. And the last one, 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. All right, I got Galatians 6 and 10. Um, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Okay, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially mm -hmm. to those who belong to the family of believers. Whenever the opportunity presents itself, we should, see, as, as, as men of integrity, we should seek to do good towards others. It's an action and not a reaction. Mm. Because you won't be able to do it if it's a reaction. Mm. But if it's an action, you'll be able to do it. It's not contingent on someone saying thank you. Wow. And the hardest thing for us to do is to do something for somebody without, without expecting a thank you response. It has to be an action and not a reaction. Goodness. That's yeah. that's that's one of the that's one of the fruit of the spirit. Goodness, faithfulness. Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. Somebody read that for us. Uh, never let your loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation all right thank you brother thank you brother with faithfulness now we should have an attitude of faithfulness that that expresses itself in in how we interact with others our faithfulness should be a reflection of our faith i'm gonna say it one more time our faithfulness should be a reflection of our faith. In fact, we just talked about him a second ago. In his book, Across That Bridge, John Lewis says, faith to me is knowing in the solid core of your soul that the work has already been done. Mm -hmm. God has already done the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is express our faith mm -hmm. and, and, and just believe in what he has already done for us. Okay? So, Faithfulness. The next one is gentleness. Gentleness. Philippians 4 and 5. 
You know how many fruit of the spirit we have here, so you know we're almost done. Gentleness, Philippians 4 and 5. See, your stomach has already been there. Mm -hmm. Let your reasonableness be everyone. The Lord is at hand. Okay. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Now, get this. Life can be hard. And I think, Brother Robinson, because of that, we develop a hard exterior which causes us to treat people harshly. Okay? Even though it's true, hurt people hurt people yeah man that, yeah. that's true that's hurt true. people hurt people you know what? Okay? we all know that to be true i also believe pastor that healed people help heal people my, my, my. healed people help heal people the last one for the teacher hold on hold on okay hold all on. right all right I, that's what i'm waiting for go ahead <laughs> <laughs> you mean to tell me Brother Tate can talk to me any way he want to, and I still got to show him gentleness? That, that's, woo that's what the scriptures say, dude. But I just want to, I'm repeating it just to show you how difficult these are. Man, you can't do it in your own power. You can't do it in, you, I mean, if, if, if it's left to Othello, it, it can't be done. But if it's left up to the Holy Spirit, yeah, that has equipped you to do it, then it ain't a problem. So the and, question and, is, and, and, the and let me follow it up with uh, let me be more direct then. Excuse mm -hmm. me, Brother Tate, I wasn't assailing you. This is a Second Amendment country, so still let gentleness be known unto all men. This is, I mean, still the challenge of the Christian walk, showing that you are in this world but not of this world. This is not that is not an easy scripture at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Well, I would jump in because I, I think, I think uh, Brother Scott, we're walking these things so well. But notice it's the fruit of the spirit, which means it's not a mechanical thing. It's genetic. Mm. You know, it's not something that, that you so much. And I think they need to be exercised. Don't get me wrong. But he's, he's not saying, he's not, Brother Scott, you're not teaching awareness. You're teaching expectation. Mm, wow. This is this is not just something I'm supposed to be aware of. The way, the way he's addressing it, Tony Evans, this is expected behavior. Mm -hmm. This is it's genetic. Uh, Othello was about six five or six six. Somebody in his family is tall. He didn't just get that. You know what I mean? It's it's in him. It it's just just the way it is. And so to some degree, even though we we may not be manifesting it to the degree, but our awareness puts us on check now. This is expected behavior. So, Reverend Washington, if this is expected behavior and this is expected conduct, how do we cultivate these fruits? Brother, uh, Brother Scott said we got them. We, yeah. We, we got them, but they're not being manifested. How do we cultivate them? If they have to nourish them. You, you have to nourish them. Yeah. It's just like, just like being a farmer. Yeah. A farmer plant a crop, but he just doesn't expect them to grow. He's got to do something, fertilize them to Very make good. them grow. So yeah. those spirits got to be fertilized. They got to be nourished. They got to be cultivated by nourishment. You, you read the Bible, you, you read the Bible and you live the standards of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I, I think, uh, I think what this, what the author was trying to help us to see is that the difficulties that we face help cultivate these gifts in our lives. Wow. Okay. And I think that's what I think what that's what the author wants us to see. If you're having some difficulties in your life, as a kingdom man, they are there. They're there not to not to condemn you, but to cultivate you and to bring out those gifts. So whenever we see some dif difficulties come in our in our lives, we ought to. I think James says, uh, "What did James say? You know, count don't it all joy. Count it all joy. There you go." Okay. When all of these difficulties come in your life, because that's a chance for these gifts to be cultivated and be manifested and bought out. So I Brother think teacher, that's what I'm now. Brother Teacher, I wasn't pushing back. I was agreeing with you because yesterday in the news, I heard something that just broke my heart. A 29 year old teacher was shot by, he was a stepfather to someone, and he was the same color as us. And I'm, so I'm backing you up on that scripture in terms of he, back to what Brother Ware is saying, and Brother Robinson, this is not being cultivated. Both two lives are destroyed because someone didn't show gentleness, you know, and 
and I was just re reiterating because it, it's just hard to show when everything is macho and here's my snub nose and here's my conceal license. Everything is macho down here, but you, we are still charged, as Reverend Washington said, to, this is already in you. You know, it's already supposed to be there. So. Mm -hmm. And Brother Scott, can I say one other thing? Go I ahead. think uh, uh, it's fruit. It's a, it's a thing. It's a living mm -hmm. thing. So it does have to be nurtured, but it's still, we need to be aware that it's present, first of all. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's key. To, to sessions like this where we're driving and we're hearing it in Sunday school, I need to know that the, God has planted in me love, joy, peace, long suffering. Um, he has planted that in me, and if it's in his yard, he comes and expects it to show itself. It needs to, I need to know that it's there so I can expect it, I can look for it. Uh, in this movie, uh, Mark Twain's book uh, made a movie out of it. It's called A Prince and a Pauper. Okay, and if you remember that that storyline, where this this kid from the hood, because he looks like the the king, the prince's son, he assumes the role of kingship, whereas the boy who's the king or the prince, he goes and gets locked outside of his kingdom. Well, he gets in much trouble because he still thinks he's the king. It's innate to him to tell people what to do. It's innate for him to expect them. Don't talk back to me, and they can't recognize him though. Whereas the boy that's in the judgment of the prince's chair, he's got access to everything, but he don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? And so I think what, <laughs> what we're doing through these type of settings and sessions is I'm making you aware of what's present. And then, like you say, Brother Webb, we got to teach us how to use them. We got to <laughs> teach us how to use those things. So, so you, just, you just connected what Brother Ware said because he said they're here. Yeah. But we, we have to we have to we have to be aware to use it. Yeah. Mm. We we have to cultivate uh the fruit that God has given us through the Holy Spirit. Why is that, Why? Reverend Brother Scott? Why? Mm -hmm. Why do we need to cultivate these gifts? I mean, as kingdom men, why do we need to cultivate them and bring them forth? Because um our desire is to do the will will of Christ. And if we're gonna be if we're going to be uh the salt of the earth. There you go. Uh, there if going, you go. If we're going to make disciples, then we have to we have to reflect what a disciple is. There you go. I am so mm -hmm. proud of you, Rob right. Scott, because <laughs> because listen, I think one of the things that you brought up is mm -hmm. that we have to be successful, and mm -hmm. one of the things that we're going to be successful at doing what is what is what has we been called to do? You mm -hmm. absolutely like, to be the light of the world, yeah. to be mm -hmm. the salt of the earth. To make to be disciple maker, and mm -hmm. if we're going to be successful at doing that, integrity is important. Right. It is it is a must. We need to have integrity, and we need to practice integrity and have the integrity because it is the foundation of what we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just think how just think how important if Martin Luther King was caught coming out of a whorehouse, how mm -hmm. effective he would have been. <laughs> a brother and, Louis, and, and and we know they already. They already tried to attack his integrity. Yes, sir. So, yeah, but, and they tried but, to do it but, with Jesus. But right. who he was did not have to reflect the the attacks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So mm -hmm. thank you. And I think that's important that we identify these 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 fruits, cultivate them, and mm -hmm. manifest them as well. Mm -hmm. Because they're so important to our to our success. Mm -hmm. All right, brother pa Pastor Washington, you had one more, you had another comment, then we're gonna move on. Okay. Well, right. Well, he brought up a good point about a person like a king or what have you. The fact that you have scars in your integrity doesn't mean you can't be, you can't, can't fulfill your purpose. Because mm. I'm sure King was not a perfect man. Right, right. But it didn't stop him from fulfilling his purpose. But mm -hmm. it would have influenced the number of people who wanted to follow him. Mm. Right. Uh, good. Thank you, brothers. Really All right, wise. last one, last one, because uh, uh, we got about five minutes, and uh, uh, and I, I think we I think we have enough time uh, just to get done. The last one, self control, First uh, Corinthians nine and twenty seven. Somebody read that for us real quick. But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, brother Dolph. Uh, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. We know this is Paul. It's amazing that this is the last one mentioned in Scripture. 
because it may be the most important one for us to remember as kingdom men, self-control. He's, he's given us his spirit, this, this fruit, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Too often, we live our lives regretting our actions instead of revealing our convictions. Ooh. Ooh. Uh -huh. We live our lives regretting our actions instead of revealing our convictions. Mm -hmm. We have to discipline our bodies as men of integrity to watch the things we say and the things we do. I don't care how good you may or may not be, this is a simple fact. We are either going to be Satan's slave or the Savior's servant. Uh, I'll say it again. It, there, there is no in between. I, 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 mm. I'm not trying to be extreme, but I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying. I, I don't care. You, some of us are, are better by nature than others are by practice. But the fact of the matter is, mm. you either going to be Satan's slave, or you going to be the servants of the Savior's servant. Mm -hmm. There is no in between. Mm -hmm. And if you think there there is, you just fooling yourself. Now, Amen. Here's my last question. Then, 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 I, then I got a final thought. My last <laughs> question. Let's take, let's take, let's take one or two comments here, and then we're gonna finish up, Pastor. Mm -hmm. How does walking with the Spirit and living in Him help you to maintain your integrity? After mm -hmm. all we've discussed here, how does walk? Somebody sum it up for, for us. How does walking with the Spirit and living in Him help you maintain your integrity? I, I think I think one of the big things is, is your pursuit in life. I think that if your pursuit is a pursuit of happiness, I think that, see, because when you look at happiness and joy, if your pursuit is for happiness, you, you know, happiness changes with the season. When things are going well, you're happy. But when you have joy, your, your, your storms in life, it knows it's not so bad because with, when you start to attain joy, you, you've, you've trusted God through some storms that you've had in your life. Mm -hmm. So now when you go through these storms and you trust God, you realize that trusting God brought me through this storm. But a lot of our blessings today have come after going through a storm. So when you start to attain joy, it's like Paul said in Philemon, if God blesses me to get through this, it's, it's a blessing for God. But if he don't, I know it's for my betterment. Wow. So when okay. you trust God mm -hmm. and you your pursuit is for joy, you're happy in your storm. And then the more you trust God, the more you trust God with your storm, you start to trust God with everything. If someone is, is talking about your or treating you bad, you start understanding that it ain't my place to snap back at that person. I get that person over to God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to still treat them with love. No matter what comes up, you stop carrying a burden on when life situations happen because now you've developed that muscle of trust. Mm -hmm. You can give more over to God and now you can walk in a spirit because you understand that the strength is not with you. You didn't you you give things over to God because of trust. And I think the big thing is your pursuit. Is it of happiness, which is gonna change with the season, or mm. is it joy? Mm. Thank you, Brother Spears. Thank you, Brother Spears. Okay. Hey, brother teacher. Oh. Okay, oh, Othello. Go right Washington. ahead. Reverend mm -hmm. Washington said something a few weeks ago, and I can't believe it popped into my head. But he mentioned <laughs> well, how do we pass down the faith? Say, say it one more time, Othello. Say it one more time. Reverend Washington asked about how do we pass down this faith. Okay. Why is it important that we pass this down? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is uh this I don't have a 30 way caller on my phone. So this is the best time to say this. We all gotta do something in terms of uh not 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 judging anybody, but I'm just saying we all know somebody. Some of us I don't have sons. Brother Tom, Brother Rudy has sons, Brother Michael has sons, Brother Johnson has sons, but we all know somebody that we can mention these sidebar. This is just a sidebar, but we can mention these fruits of the spirit too, because it does at our age. We are not uh, in the, uh, in the on the battlefield necessarily. Some of us are, you know, have lived out our life and are just, you know, enjoy reaping the rewards of living a good life. But uh, the spirit put on my heart to say, hey, we all know somebody that we can mention these fruits to. But to answer your question, the uh, how does the I was walking the spirit and living with him, live and living in him help you maintain your integrity? The Holy Spirit can't lie. So if you are living a lie, it's going to come out 
in, in your lack of joy, in your lack of peace, in your wow. lack of patience. You can put on whatever suit you want to. You can drive the nicest car you want to. But how does walking with the spirit, first of all, is priceless. I mean, just the peace you have to be at home and to know that your, your family respects you. I had a friend tell me today and said, uh, you always listen, you know, and I, I think I say too much sometimes, but I like that. That means I'm patient. He says, I listen to him instead of just judging him. So brothers, we uh, two things. We all know somebody we could talk to, but to answer that question, how does walking in the spirit help you maintain your integrity? You just can't, I can't hear the preaching of Pastor Anderson or the prayers of Reverend Washington or the prayers of my first pastor, Craig, and 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 not walk it. It's, it's, it's just, it's just, like you're being fed something that's, that has to come out. Brother, Brother Scott. All right. Go ahead, okay. bro. Brother Williams. I think it also boils down to uh, walking with the spirit. The spirit strengthens us and it leads us into the, into the right direction. It goes back to the old saying, let the spirit lead you. So if you're walking with the spirit, the spirit is going to strengthen you spiritually. Mm -hmm. It's going to always lead you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, brother. So thank you, brothers. So I, I got one final thought that, that, that I'm, I am absolutely done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. One final thought. I want to leave this with you. I want, I, I want you brothers to pay attention to this. Brother Abner, I, I want to leave this, I want to leave this thought, uh, thought with the brothers. One day, one day, Brother Robinson, a young disciple of Christ who wanted to become all that God had in mind for him, visited the home of an elderly Christian seeking his advice. He had heard that this old man had never lost his love for Christ in all the years he had known the Savior. The old Christian was sitting on the porch with his, his dog stretched out before him, taking a, uh, just, just taking in a beautiful sunset. The young man asked the question, why is it, sir, most Christians zealously chased after God during the first year or two after their decision to follow him, but then fall into the complacent ritual of merely attending church once or twice a week and end up losing their passion for the Lord altogether. The young man continued, I've heard you are not like that. I've been told that you have fervently sought after God throughout the years as a Christian. People see something in you that they don't see in most people who claim to be Christians. What makes you different? What makes you a godly man of integrity? The old man smiled and replied, let me tell you a story. One day I was sitting here quietly in the sun with my dog. Suddenly, a large white rabbit ran across in front of us. My dog jumped up and, and took off after that big rabbit. He chased the rabbit over, over the hills with a passion. Soon, other dogs joined, joined him, attracted by his barking. What a sight it was as the pack of dogs ran uh, barking across the, the creeks, up stony, uh, stony embankments and through the thickets and thorns. Gradually, however, one by one, the other dogs dropped out of the pursuit. Discouraged by the course and frustrated by the chase, only my dog continued to hotly pursue with the rabbit. In that story, uh, the young man, uh, uh, only my dog continued in a highly pursuit, to highly pursue the white rabbit. In that story, young man, is the answer to your question. The young man <laughs> sat in confused silence. Finally, he asked, I don't, I don't understand. What is the connection between the rabbit chase and the quest for God? You fail to understand, answered the old man, because you fail to ask the obvious question. Why didn't the other dogs continue on the chase? And the answer to that question is that they were only joining the excitement of the group. <laughs> they had never seen the rabbit. <laughs> 
<laughs> Unless you have actually seen the seen rap, the, the chase is just too difficult <laughs> to continue. My, oh. my passion <laughs> and determination necessary to keep up the chase. Here's my closing point, brother. If you're going to live a godly standard, if you're going to be men who don't compromise your integrity, that God has called us all to be, make sure you have seen the God who is calling you for yourself. Mm. Brother, I, brothers, I appreciate you. I have enjoyed the, the past six weeks. I love you all. And, and thank you, Pastor, for giving, and, and brother, uh, bro, brother Ware and Brother Johnson for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> Amen. Mighty good. Amen. Mighty good. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and that's, we're not done. Uh, I, I, I know uh, this book is not over. Week six. Uh, that's a hard act to follow, Brother Ware, but I'm convinced that it's your turn. When it's your turn, it's your turn. I, I believe that about God. When it's your turn, it's your turn. Brother Scott, we love you, man, and, and we feel the passion, but let's make sure as brothers, as kingdom men, that we don't trivialize the, 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 the great storytelling and the, and, and, the, and the presentation and not actually hear the message. Yeah. God is calling me He's calling deacons, he's calling laymen, he's calling mar married men and single men. He's calling all of us to live a life of integrity. And it's only through living this life do we show the world it really makes a difference. The world is saying it don't make a difference. You can win a championship, you can, you can be a billionaire, you can be president. You don't have to have any integrity. It's up to us to model to our children, to the people who follow us, even the ladies in our lives, that I'm different because I have something that was I didn't even ask for. God gave it to me. The Holy Spirit did. And so Brother Scott, uh, with Tony Evans' help, brought out the fact that if we didn't leave anything else today, that it is the Spirit who chose me. I saw the rabbit. He is the Spirit who called me. And notice this in Galatians 5.22 through verse 26 on page 87. It says, let, he says, if we live by the Spirit, can I amplify that for you just for a moment? Uh -huh. He's saying the life that I have was initiated by the Spirit. Do you get that? Come he on, says, come if on. I live by the Spirit, then what comes after my, like a child, what comes yeah. after birth? They don't stay in the cradle, they walk. Uh -huh. So he says, if I've been birthed by the Spirit, then I need to start walking depending on the Spirit. Uh -huh. All that all all is not in me. I'm not going to do right. You're not going to do right. Brother Hilly is probably the oldest one on this line, but I think he testified and tell you, even at his age, you have struggles. Life is nothing guaranteed and automatic. I've got to learn lesson one is to depend on the Holy Spirit. Brother Dokes could tell you that. You got to learn to depend on the Spirit. That's it. And, and, and one other thing, a few years, th this, is, this is integrity. A few years ago, uh, 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 they were. You remember when there was just a home run derby going on in the league with Sosa and McGuire and and and, and Griffey? Man, they they were they were breaking new records, blowing blowing numbers out, and then all of a sudden they decided to check. They checked and found out it was something. I don't even know the answer whether the back was court or whatever it was, but. All that they had done to make a statement for themselves was disqualified. No integrity. There you go. No there integrity. Go. No integrity. Uh, ben, ben Johnson, mm -hmm. fastest man in the world for a minute. Mm -hmm. Find out no integrity. Brother Scott, you asked us earlier about, about uh, how do we institute this? How do we, how do we break, begin? Well, if we start expecting it from one another, you follow what I'm saying? If we start inspecting it, then we can expect it. But until we start inspecting and expect, then we shouldn't even expect it from each other. Whether it's with my children, with my spouse, or with my money, if I don't expect it, inspect it, then I shouldn't expect it. And the text is telling us we need to expect it because 
we inspect each other. We expect those things from one another. And, and it's, the, it's again, it's the spirit that has chosen me and you. And it, because he's chosen me and you, this needs to be growing out of me at some point. Okay, I joined church two years ago. Okay, I haven't mastered it yet, but keep walking. At, at some point, it's supposed to show up. That's all I'm asking. I, I eat with a fork and a spoon and a knife because my parents did. We got to model that for brothers. If we don't model it for them, they'll, they'll eat with their hands if they want to because they've never seen it before. I, I'm sorry. Brother Scott, you did a sufficient job. Forgive me, but this is, this you, is important. This is, great this words, is Thank you. It's important. Thank you. Brother Ware, we'll, we'll pick up. No, Brother Irvin Johnson, we'll pick up with him on next week. Thank you guys for your time. It's a lot of brothers who are dropping in. Thank you, man. Hopefully you're getting some things from us. I was going to see who needs to introduce himself, but Kevin, Kevin already did. He said some Kevin Washington, that's my brother, y'all. Kevin, uh, uh, look, we went to church together many years ago. He's with us. I see Brother Hillier. Um, I'm not sure if there's anybody else here for the first time. Hillier's been here before, Will Jones. But thank you guys for joining in. I'm not going to keep you. Let's remember one another in prayer. Uh, Peter Martin, I see you. Let's remember one another in prayer. I want to ask that you would uh, remember Brother Spencer Turner in your prayers. Brother Joyce Doak's wife was in an accident on yesterday. She's, she's home, but let's remember her in prayer, okay? Also, uh, Mark Berkeley, obviously we've made mention of him, but I'll mention him one more time, asking for God's strength in his life as he deals with the loss of his, of his wife. But, but us kingdom men, again, we're men of prayer as well. So let's remember one of them in prayer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw myself on the fire. I wanna ask that you guys will remember me in prayer uh, I'm waiting on some uh, uh, some guidance from the doctor, but I got some bad news on last well, some some scary news. Let's put it that way. Don't know how uh, what what it all means yet, but but I'm gonna ask you guys to just lift me up in prayer so that it'll be nothing, but but it could be something. But I don't know. We just gonna trust God. I'm gonna, like like Stephen Scott when we're under pressure, when it's tough, how do you handle it? And so I'm gonna try to trust. I'm gonna try to trust that, uh, you know, God's got his own way of doing whatever he's going to do. And sometimes it's just your turn. You got to do what you got to go through. So please, please remember me in your prayers as well. All right. So we're going to close out. I'm going to ask um, uh, Spears. Spears, will you lead us in our kingdom, man's oath? Okay. And I'm going to, um, let's see. Get a good deacon. Brother Gilmore. Will you lead us in a word of prayer? And I'm going to ask Brother Spears to close us out in our kingdom, man. So will you all do that for me? Okay. Sure. Brother Gilmore. Okay. Shall we bow? Our Father and our God, we come to say thank you now, Lord. We thank you for this moment, oh God. We thank you for this time that we've shared with you, oh God. We thank you for learning even more about you, oh God. We thank you for the, the, the fruits of the spirit, oh God. We ask that you would give us all what we need, oh God. Help mm -hmm. us in this endeavor, endeavor about life, oh God. Mm -hmm. And oh God, help us to apply everything that you've asked us to do in this world, oh God. Now God, we ask a special prayer for our uh, Reverend Washington right now. Give him what he needs, oh God. He understands that you're in control, oh God. And, and oh God, he accepts whatever you decide. Mm -hmm. So give him what he needs, but we're praying for him right now, God. We pray for all the brothers right now, oh God. And oh God, I ask this as we go to sleep tonight, oh God, you would... Give us what we need for the next day, oh God. And if it pleases you, God, wake us up in the morning. And oh God, you make it possible for this kingdom men, oh God. To share the, the gospel with somebody, God. Yeah. Letting them know that, God, you are still mighty to save, oh God. God, we thank you for this opportunity, God, because every day is not promised. So we thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, God. And we realize that we cannot make this life without you in it. So have your way. Yes. Do what only you can do. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, Amen. As a kingdom man, I stand. As a kingdom man, as a kingdom man, I, stand, man I, stand. I stand. To acknowledge my position in Christ. To acknowledge, to acknowledge my, position my position in Christ. Christ. My place in my home. My, my place, place in my, in my home. home. My potential for service in my church. My, my potential, potential for service in my church. church. In my church. church. And my purpose in this world. And my purpose in, in this world. world. As a kingdom man, I stand. As a kingdom man, I stand. 
to acknowledge my position in Christ. To acknowledge, to acknowledge my position in Christ. Christ. My place in my home. My, my place, place in my home. home. My potential for service in my church. My, church. my, my potential, potential for service, service in my church. church. And my purpose in the world. And my purpose, my purpose in, the world. in the world. Amen. God bless Amen. you all. Thank you, brothers. Thank you so Thanks. much, Brother Gilmore. You guys have a safe week, and hopefully we'll get together again next next Monday, all right? Amen. 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 Amen.